Good evening, folks. This is Marshall Reeves, your captain. Welcome aboard Delta's Flight 196, nonstop jet service to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Flying time tonight is 8 hours and 20 minutes at a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. We expect a smooth flight with the possibility of a few bumps around the equator. Weather forecast for our arrival into Orlando calling for a few scattered clouds, temperature of 82 degrees. So now please uh, stow your carry on baggage under the seat in front of you, raise your seat backs, and put your tray tables into the upright and locked position. In preparation for takeoff, we would invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the Ohio Ram Show with your host, Lee Kreider. Well, thank you, Marshall Reeves, for that introduction. It's coming from the cockpit of his 767. If you'd like to see more of Marshall Reeves, he was on show number 166 of the Ohio Ram Show. And this is the Ohio Ram Show, a show about cycling and ultra cycling. And my name is Lee Kreider. I host the show, and this is show number 169. As some of you know, I had a little stay in the hospital last weekend. I'm home. Uh, better. We're doing okay. And we're glad to be back with you. A little delay in this show because of that uh, contretemps at the hospital. But now I want to remind you about Calvin's Challenge coming back. It's going to be a, once again at Springfield, Ohio, brought to you by our new director, Maria Vasquez. We're happy to have her doing that. There's going to be some changes in Calvin's Challenge, most notably she is adding a 24-hour race this year and it will be a ram qualifier there'll be a new route there'll be a new headquarters there'll be the new start finish line so be sure to get your reservations in for calvin's challenge you'll see a link in the show notes at the bottom of this video if you're watching it on highramshow.com website so today our guest is going to be frank Puvit from arlington virginia he just finished a DECA Ironman. That's 10 Ironman back to back. And Frank is riding for a charity that involves a young lady, about nine years old, I believe, who has leukemia. And as of the DECA Ironman, he has raised $50,000 for that wonderful charity. And again, in the show notes, there's a link to Frank's website his charity site where you can donate to this great charity. So with that, we're gonna head on to Arlington, Virginia and Frank Pumick. So Frank Pumick there in Arlington, Virginia. How are you doing today, Frank? I'm doing great, thanks, Lee. We got you on here because you have quite a background in ultra events. And I'd like you to tell a little about yourself and then a little bit what you've done in the way of ultra things. I think you've been to Antarctica and every place else, haven't you? Yeah, I've been quite, uh, quite a few times around the globe, I guess. Um, well, I'm a 49-year-old uh, husband, father, business owner from Arlington, Virginia. And I've been uh, doing endurance racing. I started when I was 30, so going on 20 years now. Okay. And tell about some of the other things you've done. You, you climbed some mountains, uh, done some Ironman. I have. So I've climbed uh, five of the seven summits uh, with only Denali and Everest left on my list. I've, uh, geez, I've run an ultra marathon on all seven continents. I've done uh, Ironmans and a triple Ironman and a quintuple Ironman. I've done uh, 80 some marathons. Um, I've done many of the most difficult 100-mile ultras around the world, and I've done stage races, like 150-mile races through the Sahara Desert and the Gobi Desert and the Atacama Desert, Antarctica. I've uh, stand-up paddled Molokai to Oahu, which is, I guess, the toughest stand-up paddle race uh, in the world. And really, cycling is the, is the least of my, my talents, to be honest with you. <laughs> so when you say the... Uh seven summits you're talking about on each continent is that correct 
Yeah, so I'm trying to climb the highest mountain on, on each continent. So you got Denali, which is in Alaska, I believe. And yep, that's North America. And then Everest was Asia left. And they're on your bucket list? I'm saving the easy ones for last. <laughs> yeah, they are on my bucket list. <laughs> if I can get those in without getting divorced, it'll be, uh, it'll be uh, another accomplishment. <laughs> Okay, and you've raised quite a little money for charity, various charities, haven't you? I have. Um, so I've raised close to a quarter of a million dollars for charities, um, but not really, um, you know, for personal personal people. I, I like to raise money a little more personally, um, either learn about someone's cause and reach out to them and deliver the money to them. I know, you know, lots of charities do great work, but you know, you give to a big charity and you don't necessarily get to see where it's going or feel where it's going. I like to no. get to know the people I'm helping and uh, deliver the money. So I guess the first big one I did was after the Boston uh, Marathon bombings, I ended up raising about $80,000 for uh, two of the victims. And we literally ran the money from D.C. up to Boston with a friend of mine wow. and raised a bunch of money. And then I've raised, uh, actually, in my first attempt at RAM, I raised over $100,000 for a young man who was beaten up. And then I've raised uh, money for little kids with uh, cancer. My, my nephew, coincidentally, was on my RAM crew two years ago, and he wasn't feeling well while he was crewing. And it was right after that we found out he had leukemia. So uh, kids with cancer is kind of my, uh, is my thing now. You know, I was really moved and shaken by what our family had to go through. When I see little kids, you know, but he's 25. When you see a, a three-year-old or a five-year-old or, a, or a, you know, a 13-year-old who I'm helping now who's battling for their life, it really uh, puts things into perspective. So that's kind of my thing. So as we were talking before we went on the air here, you don't yet have a charity identified for your RAM 2018, uh, do you? That, that's correct. I don't right now. I, I'm currently training for another race in October, and I have a little girl who's battling leukemia that I'm raising for now, but I don't know if, if she'll also be for RAM or not, so I can't give you a definite answer on that. But currently, I am raising money for a little girl with cancer. Okay, well, keep us updated on that, Frank, as you go forward. Now, let's talk Definitely. a little about let's talk a little bit about your uh, RAM experience. Uh, <laughs> I've tried to block most of that out in the last in the last two years. <laughs> it didn't it didn't quite go as I planned, as it does it for many, I guess. Well, uh, first of all, let me say, Frank. You're not unique in that uh, in that role. I mean, uh, the biggest names there are have found themselves in a somewhat similar predicament. So it's instructive to hear about it. Yeah, there's no doubt. I know I'm not. I've got plenty of company in that in that way. So you're now scheduled for Ram 2018. Is that correct? I am. What have you learned that you're going to apply to this one? Well, I learned that you can't, well, I don't want to use the word can't. It's very difficult to be a runner that does RAM. You know what I mean? I showed up last time, uh, admittedly tough, but I was basically a runner trying to do one of the toughest cycling races in the world. So this next time I'm trying to actually turn myself into a cyclist. You know, I don't know if you remember, I was the only guy with hairy legs and I had a, my running shirt <laughs> flapping in the wind for 2,000 miles. And so I didn't really get it. You know, when, when my butt started to hurt, I put on a, a padded, you know, gel cover over top of it. And then things really went downhill. So I'm trying to be a little smarter, you know, this time around. Well, I remember your baggy shorts, but I thought I detected some... Uh... Uh, cycling shorts might be hidden underneath them. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. No, that yeah, that that was just kind of fun. I wasn't dumb enough to wear my board shorts for three thousand miles. I just wore those for the first, you know, twenty five or so. I did have board shorts, and I I did had board shorts. I didn't have enough board shorts, I can tell you that. But I I did have those at least. <laughs> I have to tell you, one time my wife and I were going on a ride, uh, and I got there. It was some distance from home only to find out I'd left my cycling shorts at home. <laughs> and I, this couldn't have been more than 100 miles, Frank. But I tell you what, I've never left cycling shorts at home after that. Hey, believe me, I, I totally get it now. When I first started cycling, I wasn't using cycling shorts. 
And, you know, I got up to like 75 miles and was like, whoa, with something, this can't be right. So <laughs> I, I did get with the cycling, the padded shorts program pretty quickly. Okay. And uh, have you got a crew lined up, Frank? Yeah, I, I do pretty much. I mean, I got lots of people that have offered really more than I could take. I've got the majority of my crew from last time coming back. Um, and I, I, yeah, I do have pretty much in place. Okay, very good. And uh, we'll be looking for you. Now, what uh, are you looking for in the future, Frank? You mean as, as far as racing or, or what? Any of your ventures, you, uh, you talk, talked about your mountains. What else you got in mind? Well, uh, currently right now, I'm training for what they call a DECA Iron Distance Triathlon. So it's basically a 10 times Ironman continuous. So you got to do a 24-mile swim, 1,120-mile bike, and a 262-mile run. So uh, that's in October. Uh, and I've been trained for that. You know, I started in June, which is already kind of behind the eight ball. But, you know, Lee, when you've got a, a business and a, and a family with young kids, um, it's as anybody that trains for this type of stuff. You know, it's not like training for a marathon. I mean, it's like a full-time job as anybody that's trained for AM knows. So it's very difficult getting it all in. And even as we speak, this race is uh, what, oh my God, it's two months away tomorrow. And there's – more than 50% chance that I'm not even going to make it to the start line after all this training because I'm just having a hard time getting everything covered. But anyway, that's, that's my immediate goal. Of course, Ram uh, for 2018, and then I'd like to do um, Denali and Everest. Uh, I'd like to run 100 marathons. You know, I'm about 80. I'm a numbers guy. I, I don't know if I do things for the, for the correct reason. You know, I just – I don't particularly enjoy cycling and I don't particularly enjoy running a hundred miles either, but I like the challenge. I like the thought of, of finding out about something, you know, wondering if you can do it, making the decision to try it and then training your ass off for, you know, three, six months, a year, and then accomplishing the goal, you know, looking back on it is what I enjoy. So, um, yeah, there's a number of things I still want to do. Okay, well, we wish you very well, and I appreciate it. We we had quite a challenge getting together. I don't. Know, we've been working on this for two years, haven't we, Frank? Yeah. Well, you know, you reached out to me. I think I was so uh, mentally shattered after that last attempt. I, the last thing I wanted to do was chat about it for <laughs> a half hour. So I wasn't too excited to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you did, and you certainly have have uh, done some amazing things. We all admire that, and. And we appreciate you taking the time, Frank. I appreciate it. And good luck to you. Hey, keep us uh, updated on uh, this uh, 10 times Ironman thing, uh, because know. you'll probably have either uh, done that by the time we get this on the air. So we'll update people on that. Okay, yeah, Frank? Yeah, definitely will. If it comes off, I'll, I'll give you a full, uh, full rundown of it. Okay, very well. And thanks once again for being with us, Frank. Thanks, Lee. Take care. I appreciate it. Well, thank Frank for giving us that time. As you can see, Frank is a person who can stow a lot of material in a few words, a talent that I could use and a lot of people could use, I think. Thanks, Frank, for that sh And I want to thank the viewers of the show for your support. You support the show on the social media and we appreciate that and everything you do helps advance the sport of ultra cycling and I want to thank the entire ultra cycling family we've mentioned this before when things happen but you don't find out about how close the family is spread around the world but still very close due to the availability of the internet and you gave me so many good wishes and so much support and prayers and thoughts and advice and you name it while I was in the hospital last weekend and I appreciate it a great deal you mean so much to me and you mean so much to all the people I've seen this poured out on other people who have had accidents or illness and I was the recipient of it this past weekend thank you our next show will be October the 17th with Ben Dodge the bicycle attorney from Arizona he will be sharing some of his experiences representing bicyclists before the law 
and some of his views on bicycle law. I think you'll enjoy Ben. He's a great advocate for our sport, and we welcome him to the show. So, see you in about 10 days. Goodbye. Music by Kevin McLeod.